Okay, good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome every single one of you on this beautiful Monday morning, the 7th of November. Guys, I am your host, Dane von der Must, as always. This is Pounds for Breakfast, and we are in a brand new week. Now, guys, if you were with us last week, last week was absolutely massive. We had that Federal Reserve interest rate decision. We smashed the markets. We had NFT. We had a ton of fun. We smashed the markets there again and every other day in between. Now, this week, we're going to see if we can take it to a whole new level. And there's a ton of things in the markets you need to know about because things are about to get crazy. Now, in addition to that, guys, there is a massive, massive change coming for every single one of you. For those who love trading NASDAQ, for those of you who love trading German 30, Dow Jones, we are about to introduce a change that is unlike anything else in the industry right now, right? We are going to be implementing a change over the next day or so. And this is going to mean that you're going to get more bang for your buck in the markets when trading things like NASDAQ, US 30, Dow Jones, so on and so forth, right? We're going to keep the margin requirements exactly the same for these instruments, yet we're going to change the gearing so that you can make more per pip every time the markets move, right? This will position us as Globex 360 as the most profitable instrument provider on the planet, right? If so, if you really love trading US City, if you really love trading NASDAQ, if you really love trading uh, S&P 500, German 30, or any of these other instruments, there is a massive, massive change coming that is going to set us apart from absolutely everybody. So for those of you who have your $100, $1,000 accounts, whatever it may end up being, these changes are going to completely change the way we trade the markets. In addition to that, our new platform is ready. We are going to be launching it and releasing it this week. We've done some bug changes. It looks absolutely mind-blowing, right? From a technology standpoint, we're going to see something crazy. Tyson saying, I smell a change one to 500. So Tyson, that's on leverage. We're actually going to change the gearing without changing the margin requirements. So gearing means that every time the markets move one pip at the moment on US City, right? If you open a 0 0.10, it means every time the markets move one pip, or 10 points, that will be one cent US that you can make or lose. We're going to change that by 10x, meaning that for every pip the market moves, that will be 10 cents. So when you open a 0 0.10, every time the markets move, it's going to be 10 cents uh, profit uh, or loss, meaning that even with a small account, even with a hundred dollar account, you can make some amazing, amazing moves in the market. So as we saw last week, we did well over 10,000 pips in one day in pure profit. That means even if you opened up on the smallest potential lot size, right? A 0 0.10 on 10,000 pips, it would have meant a thousand dollars profit, even off something like a hundred dollar account, right? Which is 18, gonna soon to be 19,000 rand. So massive, massive changes. They're gonna set us apart from the competition. There will be no competition. Let's just put it that way. And then our new trading platform is absolutely going to change the way we do things in the market in complete totality. So just a quick one. If you're joining us, let me know where in the world you are joining us from. Let me know city. Let me know country. Are you at work? Are you in the car? Hopefully you're not driving. But let me know where in the world you are joining us uh, this morning. We are going to have a ton of fun this week. There are some big changes, some big fundamental data events we are going to be discussing uh, because there is a lot to talk about. Now, as of today... Daylight savings time in the US shifts up one hour, meaning that the New York Stock Exchange open opens by one hour, but also the US in general opens up by one hour later. Okay, and this is all part of DST daylight savings times, and uh, we're going to change things up completely. So just a quick shout out to our community with everybody that is in here, and I know there's far too many people to read out everybody's names. But just a quick shout out to Peter Fari, Aslam Ruan, welcome, Colin, uh, Tandi Aiden, Rob O'Hare, Sabiso, uh, Machela, Naresh, Lot Vuma, Sabiso, Bonga, Calvin, Michael, um, Chelis, or uh, let's see, Tanzile, Nashil, Graham, John Mickett, Gawain, Frank, let's see, Tyler, Peter, Solden, Alvin, Tyson, Gawain, guys, absolutely amazing stuff. Now, as always, with the goal this week is to make it's rain, right? We have a ton of opportunities in the markets. We're going to be taking advantage of price action. We're going to be looking at new strategies in terms of daylight savings time shifts, uh, and there's going to be a lot more involved. So we are going to jump into the news, into some of the items that are most important 
for this week and have a look at what the world has to offer us from a fundamental data point of event. We are going to just look deeper into the week being a Monday. We want to see which day is going to be our most profitable trading day and which day you should potentially be spending the most time on uh, from that perspective. So let's jump straight into the news. And as always, we're going to start on the local fronts and just have a look at what's happening. Transition to the US data, uh, the Euro data, and then get into that fundamental as well as S&P 500 heat map. So let's give it a look. Let's see what the world has to offer us today. So first and foremost, SARS is not playing around. Uh, they just won their first big lead over the Christovis case where there's apparently 216 million rand outstanding from a tax perspective. So guys, yeah, please don't mess around with SARS. There is a major, major focus on their efforts to collect more money. As we understand, there is a huge budget deficit at this point. We're seeing all these plans by the former or the new uh, finance minister. Those plans need to be funded from somewhere. And where does it get funded from me and you, right? So just to understand when you trade, when you make profit in the markets, right, that is considered income, right? So if you need help with income tax, please consult or, or contact a independent uh, financial advisor or a uh, income tax specialist, because if you're withdrawing profits from the market, it is income. So please understand that a lot of traders out there are withdrawing hundreds of thousands, millions of rands and just spending it, right? It has to be considered and declared as income or pulled into a business and then dealt with in a similar manner. So please don't play around. SARS is on a war path and essentially I just need more money. That's what it really comes down to. So there's a great article that I am going to be popping into the group. And that is in essence that, you know, the CPI data that we have due on Thursday, and I'll show you guys the data and we get into the fundamentals, is going to rock the market. It's going to be one of Powell's main um, cases for what the next interest rate increase is going to be. And that's going to happen in December, right? So we saw the interest rates. We did the Fed live trading session on Thursday, Wednesday, apologies. It rocked the market. All the data we're going to see, we had an NFP that was kind of a mixed bag. Unemployment was higher, but all the other data was good. These are all going to have an impact on the next federal interest rate decision. But CPI data, consumer price index, is a lead indicator towards inflation. And uh, if the Fed is doing anything at all to kind of fight that battle. Now, again, I will be sharing this link in the group. So if you aren't part of our Telegram group, just have a look down in the description below. It is the, the link to our official Telegram group. And this is where I share information uh, based on what we discuss in the live broadcast. Outside of that, nothing too much that we need to obviously talk about, but there is that article. It is a great summary of what we need to know this week. And this is what I'm gonna end up sharing in the groups. And this will talk about inflation and uh, in terms of that peak and are we seeing a de deceleration or at least a peak on current inflation. Now, quickly, as we move into some of the fundamental data for this morning, we're gonna quickly have a look at that S&P 500 heat map to just look at how the markets ended on Friday. Now, Friday was obviously NFP Friday. We saw quite a lot of volatility across the board, but in most cases, the markets ended the day in the green with the exception of Tesla down 3.6% negative, Netflix down uh, 3% as well. And uh, for most of the other segments, we see some positive growth across the board. Now, Netflix, uh, or sorry, Tesla is gonna be hugely tied to all the political issues that are currently happening with Twitter, right? Elon is not playing games. He's walked into Twitter. He's started doing retrenchments. He started doing restructuring. And the whole world is saying, what is he doing, right? Well, the reality, he's taken a public company private. It's now a private entity and he's dealing with the inefficiencies of that company. He's, he's basically shaking that tree, letting the apples fall out so that he can rebuild. He's bringing in some of the best minds to come and restructure, reshape, and as we know, Twitter is going to be the foundation of the X Everything app that he is developing. So that is extremely exciting stuff. I'm really, really keen to see what ends up happening. I'm not even on Twitter, but this has motivated me to get on Twitter. In all honesty, I actually personally just want to delete Facebook. I'm so tired of Facebook. Every time you log on Facebook, you see these horrible things. You see animal abuse, you see all these other things. Instagram is still fine for me, but I think I do want to give Twitter a crack. So if anybody's out there, they can give me a crash course on Twitter. Please do let me know uh, because I certainly need it. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to need a little bit of help there. Okay, so moving on into some of the fundamentals for today, we're obviously going to cover this in two parts. We're going to cover what is happening today and immediately, and then obviously we're going to just look at the medium to high impact news 
for the balance of the week, right? Um, in terms of today, and you guys know the draw, being a Monday, it is fairly quiet from that perspective, right? Today is Monday, obviously the 7th of November, and we can see we pretty much have ECB, European Central Bank, President Lagarde speaking, uh, and that is coming up shortly in the next little bit. That's going to be at quarter to 11, I believe. Um, and then we pretty much have nothing else. That's on a medium and high impact uh, event. Now, again, looking at the balance of the week, looking at Tuesday, uh, we got some French NFTs, uh, non-farm payrolls, not really massive, but obviously can have quite a big effect on the euro. Um, and then we have an EIA short-term energy outlook. Now, the short-term energy outlook, I believe, is going to focus a lot on the current energy crisis. It's going to have a focus on you know, the reductions in, um, in, in, in Saudi barrel production, as well as the U.S.'s current oil consumption, right? This can have an effect on crude. It can have an effect on Brent as well as WTI. So again, a lot of these energy outlooks we end up seeing the next day where people will take small pieces um, of those quoted uh, things and that will essentially move markets. So if you're an oil trader, if you're a commodity trader, this may be something that may be of interest to you. And that's going to be happening at 7 o'clock on Tuesday. Now I'm looking into Wednesday. We have some CPI data uh, on the uh, on China side of things, and we are going to be spending a lot more attention on the uh, eastern eastern areas of the world, right? Um, because there is a lot more volatility coming in. There's a lot more of a big dominance from a market perspective coming in. So we will be at some point in the near future starting to host a very very light uh, late evening stream that will most likely cover this end of the U.S. markets. But more specifically, it will cover the Asian open, right? There's a lot of volatility that we're starting to see early hours of the morning, and we may start to bring that in as a focus. If that's something that interests you, if you're a night owl and you trade late in the evenings, let us know about that because we are making some massive, massive improvements to the show. We are busy and currently under the process of hiring new presenters, changing the team quite substantially. And uh, yeah, we will do some some really crazy things. Uh, do, 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 do. Colin saying, do you think he will relaunch the public once he's cleaned it up? And that's a question regarding Twitter. Um, I don't know. It, it's very possible. I think the issue is he believes that Twitter is extremely important for the future of society and how we speak and how we obviously relate to each other. And remember, once that company's in the public domain, it's 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 subject to public speculation. It's pu subject to influence, uh, stock prices, um, shorts. We saw a Tesla. It was at one point one of the most heavily shorted uh, entities from Wall Street. And that was all political, right? So I think he's obviously learned some lessons there. He may more likely than anything keep it private. But I think when it transitions into the X Everything app, it may then take a little bit of a different approach. So we obviously need to have a look at that. Uh, someone asked about signals. Uh, do we trade live here as well as say signals? Uh, and you are new here? Uh, yes. So we are launching a very new service. Uh, it may be ready this week. I'm just waiting for confirmation from the team. But we are literally going to send and share some live trade setups. Really beautiful stuff. Market structures with probabilities of breakouts. So the traditional signals term, I like to stay away from because of the fact that there's a lot of people on Instagram selling these signals that basically tell you nothing. It just says buy now, sell now, and you gain no valuable experience from the market. And most of those times, there's no risk management. You'll blow your accounts just following these Instagram gurus. So I don't like the word signal, but we are going to be sharing trade opportunities. These are going to be flowing directly to you within our groups, but also email to you as well as available within your client area. Remember, we're doing some huge improvements and upgrades to the client area where the new trading pl platform will be there. Trading and market opportunities will be the insights, newsletters, live broadcasts, the academy, everything will be within your client area. So if you don't have a Globex 360 live account and you're watching me live, just obviously look in that link down below, get signed up to be with and part and parcel of the best broker in Africa and soon the rest of the world. So yes, yeah, just having a look at that CPI data, Asian markets, we are going to have a little bit more of a focus moving forward. Now, you'll start to see that all the US data will start coming out a little bit earlier. As I said, we're only going to see US markets open at three o'clock and we're going to see a lot of data only coming in from that 3.30 mark. So there is something very exciting I do want to try, and we're going to implement that starting from uh, Thursday this week. 
Thursday this week, we're going to see that US markets are opening up at 3 and we're going to start to get a lot of the important data at 3.30. So my proposal, and I'd like to get your guys' vote on this. Remember, Globex 360 Live, Globex 360 Live TV is for you. It's for every single one of you that are traders, right? What I'm proposing is I'd like to have longer dollars for lunch sessions, right? The morning is really about planning. The morning is really about London Open, which has obviously already happened. But looking at this week with the dollar, the, the dollar DST shift, what my proposal is, and I want to know your guys' opinion about this, is we see a lot of market volatility and moves on US Open. In the past, it was two o'clock. We see a lot of moves there. Generally, we trade the New York Stock Exchange, which happens an hour and a half later. What I'm proposing for this next season is I would like to start, right? And we can give it a test on Thursday, and I'd like to see your guys' votes on this. So you can vote one if you agree, and two if you disagree, if you want to keep the show shorter. So my proposal is as follows. I'd like to start at quarter to three from Thursday, meaning quarter to three, we plan, we trade the new the US open, right? We trade that all the way until we get to the New York Stock Exchange open, right? And that is going to happen again much later as well. We're going to start to see the New York Stock Exchange open happen at 4.30 in the afternoons. Then we're going to start quarter to three. We're going to trade the US Open. We're going to have time to, to discuss, to agree. You can have more time to ask your questions. It's going to be a lot more of an open, free-flowing type of broadcast. We will then prep for the New York Stock Exchange, trade the New York Stock Exchange, and we'll more than likely wrap up around about 5 p.m. every single day. So I'd like to give it a shot. It's going to be a little bit longer of a broadcast, around about two hours and 15 minutes but I'd like to see what that does, right? I think it'll give everybody a lot more chance to engage, a lot more time to answer questions, and it'll mean we can go at a bit of a slower pace. As you guys know, when I trade, I'm just like doing my thing, and uh, I know sometimes it's not always as easy to follow. So I'll count the votes, but it definitely looks like one is the definitive vote there, and uh, we're gonna give that a shot. All right, so starting Thursday then, I think we will already agree beforehand, quarter to three we are starting, and we're going to look at that core CPI data coming out on the dollar uh, at quarter to three. We're going to start the show, half past three, we're going to get that data coming through. Now, again, as you guys know, with CPI data, consumer price index, how expensive is the average thing in the US, right? It's a key metric to measuring inflation. And inflation is just basically things getting more expensive, the dollar being able to buy less and less what, than what it did the day before, right? And this is an ex extreme example would be the hyperinflation in Zimbabwe, where literally, you know, you could use paper money to wipe your, because it was worth nothing, right? So again, CPI is a very, very valuable indicator to look at if the Federal Reserve's attempts and economic policies are making any difference whatsoever on the markets. Now, again, if we get that negative CPI data, it'll be bad for the dollar temporarily, but really good for the industry markets. Now, again, if we get that negative CPI data, because the New York Stock Exchange is happening an hour later, it's going to give us an amazing opportunity to capitalize on the markets. We also have initial jobless claims. That is how many people are filing for unemployment in the United States. Uh, moving on to Friday the 11th, we've got some GDP data going to come out for the pound gross domestic product. Again, they're sitting and proposing a negative 0.5%, right? So they're expecting a gross domestic decline on the pound. So this is obviously going to be big. We can take advantage of that and then looking later into the us and again being just friday afternoons as they are we don't have a lot of movement we don't have a lot of fundamental data but as we've seen in the past right the past 20 fridays um for every one bear move we see two or three bull moves in that market right and vice versa depending on the season so we're going to reanalyze and have a look at how this shift may affect markets and it does there's a very interesting article out there that basically shows that how the DST shift forward essentially results in a 2% loss on the S&P 500 uh, just because of people not being able to get orders in time and not understanding that that shift happens. Um, there's an, an, an estimated $1 billion that's lost on a day like today just with orders being mixed up and not being executed in time. So there is a really great article that I am going to be sending through to you guys. Also, Another massive item that is going to be playing a huge role this week is the fact that we do have the midterm election, right? Um, there's a really good article that I've found 
that in essence helps to make ease of understanding what this all means, right? From uh, Democrats to Republicans, there are different stances and what this means and what it means for the current Biden administration. In order to summarize, what ends up happening here is it's a reshaping of Congress, right? The president stays the same and there's always a midterm about two years into a new presidency in the US. And that is where, you know, the left and the right sort of, uh, there's a change in power. There can be a vote and change in power. Now, what you'll find when understanding US uh, politics is that there's very different opinions on gun laws, on abortion, on, uh, uh, you know, uh, people being able to, you know, be, get visas within the country in terms of immigrants, uh, war, uh, all these other different uh, opinions are very, very different. So I'm going to be sharing this article and it basically gives you a quick summary on, you know, what are some of the biggest things you need to know uh, should we get this midterm uh, election and a potential change in power, right? Uh, for two years, Democrats have been in power and uh, it looks like that is going to change and what that could mean for Biden's future. Also, uh, there is going to be a very big name that may be trying to make a comeback, right? Good old Trump might very well be making a comeback. And that's going to be pretty um, interesting to see what ends up happening with him. And uh, yeah, if, if we get uh, if we get him in here, I just want to have a look here quickly. If we still have our little Trump celebration uh, sitting in here somewhere. Uh, I know we have him. Let's just have a look here. Where's our little, where's our, where's our Trump? There we go. All right. So I personally miss this old guy. Like he was absolutely mad, but uh, I mean, a good amount of fun while he was in office, right? He says it the way he said it the way it was. Stock markets performed absolutely amazing. So this is going to determine, do we get to see that again? Right. Um, so I'm going to send this article as well into the telegram group again link is down in the description below the very first link is if you do want to message me directly on telegram that is my private link it's not always being managed by me sometimes somebody else is dealing with my phone and replying to clients but i do get to see most of those messages right um yeah trump is is look love him or hate him he said things the way they were right we 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 thought very badly of him until we saw biden once we saw biden we were like okay maybe trump wasn't so bad right um, so yeah, I, I think he's an absolute machine. Now, moving on uh, into some of the markets this morning, in terms of some of the trading opportunities we do have available, uh, again, some key things to take away from and some key notes. We are going to be making a very, very big change to the gearing of some contracts. He's going to be absolutely game changing for those of you who love your industry markets. Right. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, Lucky's asking, um, which events causes a recession as dollar is looking to dip? Which events causes a recession as dollar is looking to dip? Well, look, the question itself, uh, Lucky, is not too clear. Which events cause a recession? Remember, a recession is, you know, a correction of the world and of the markets, right? We've explained before that when there's an immense amount of growth, there needs to be a correction in the market. It's in nature. It's in politics, it's in civil, civilization's growth, it's in everywhere you look. Nothing can continue growing forever. There needs to be a correction. There needs to be uh, some sort of retracement. Recession just simply means a correction. Now, generally speaking, a recession generally just happens when markets grow too quickly. There's too much money printed and ejected into a market. And remember, that's the fiat-based currency system, right? It's printing of money, it's loans, it's fictitious amounts of money that essentially pumped into a market, create this monumental growth, um, and the growth needs to retrace and correct at some point, right? Um, yes, uh, Nico saying we will then be able to open smaller lot sizes to better manage risk if the gearing changes. Yes, absolutely. So that's what we're looking for. We're looking to be able to, at the moment, the minimum uh, order value, the minimum lot size, is currently sitting at 0.10 on us that we're going to try and drop that down to 0.10 and that'll have the same gearing as a 0.10 uh but the 0.10 reflecting 10 cents per pip in the market or 10 cents per 10 uh per, per 10 points okay so correct to everybody um let me just read the comments really quickly yeah absolutely so we may very well be bringing back the dollar domination strategy 
So for those of you guys who remember in 2020 and 2021, we developed what was called the dollar domination strategy, where we absolutely dominated gold. And it only works in this particular DST shift and or change. So we are working on that as we currently speak. I'll be inviting some of you to come and develop that with me in some closed sessions. And that is where we're going to look at our bringing our MVTs, our most value traders. For those of you who've been with us through all of our live sessions, for those of you who traded the federal interest rates announcement with us, who traded NFP with us, um, we will be co-developing the, uh, the dollar domination strategy, right? Um, very, very cool stuff for those of you guys who remember and were part and parcel of that. We absolutely dominated the markets with that. So we'll be spending some time. Okay, now let's move into some live trading. Let's have a look at what opportunities exist for us in the markets. And uh, we're going to start off this morning just giving a straight look into US 30 and where the US 30 is currently sitting uh, because I believe this is obviously something we do need to monitor. We do need to watch. So US 30, just quick summary of what transpired last week in terms of uh, having a look at that NFP. NFP started with a massive, massive spike, slowly built up steam, right? Made a correction to the top side, broke down. We sold that and we ended the show at that first take profit zone. That I told people, hey, listen, take some profit here. We are at support. Ultimately, NFP after hours from about four in the afternoon did another rally uh, for about four and a half thousand pips after crashing another six and a half thousand pips. So just on Friday alone, right, this is all still Friday. Friday, we saw ranges of 5,000 plus 3,000, that's 8,000 plus another four and a half thousand, that's 12,000 plus another six, 7,000. So we saw a total of about 18,000 pips on movements just having a look at nfp right so that's obviously massive that's obviously big now looking at where we are right nfp after hours or friday night closed off markets gapped down below but then we can see we started making this build up this is all in one minute i'll switch over to a five minute and where we are now we're bouncing off that resistance right we're bouncing off that build up this is obviously part and parcel due to uh, the London Open, right? We're seeing markets try to push in, right? London Open built up into that level and uh, we might start to see a little bit of a sell-off here. Now, we don't have some great price action to deal with this London Open because it's a very, very, very skinny channel here. So no matter which way you try to draw this, you're really going to struggle to to kind of pin it. Um, but what I would say is we can obviously see we've hit resistance and we would look for any meaningful sell-off on US 30. Because again, the trend at this point in time, at this very specific moment in time, is a bear market. You'll also start to see that it starts to look like a little bit of a scallop. As soon as we go into 15 minutes, we're going to start to see this market, excluding the gap, right? We're starting to not make those low, uh, low not make higher highs, we're making lower highs. We could now see some sort of reversal um, on US City. And that is something we definitely want to monitor. We definitely want to have a look at now. I can't find a super good area of resistance here, but I do think for a buy opportunity, we do need US30 to regain and get some momentum above that 32, 500 flat mark is where I would be setting my, my alerts to start looking at going long. Now, again, remember, we are going to have the new system up and running this week. So the whole new trading platform, for those of you who are part of our insiders trading group, we are going to take things to another level. So again, we are going to shift the way we trade when we have our new platform because it takes things to a whole other level, right? Let's see here. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, just reading the comments really quickly. So we're all on the same page still as it is. Um, now quickly moving from US 30 back to the dollar index because we just want to have a look at what happened to the dollar in terms of that NFP data release. Um, so we can see that from an NFP data release, dollar just absolutely took a knock here. Now, I just want to point out that the dollar is currently on support and a known support that we've seen for quite a bit of time. Looking at a 30 minute time frame uh, and a one hour time frame, you can still see that in terms of the dollar's bigger bull structure, we're still intact, right? In terms of that support, dollar still has a lot of potential to rise. And I think that we may end up seeing some bull market, bull, bull movement on the dollar here uh, early this week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, ultimately still looking for those bear moves on indices. So US 30, German 30, 
S&P 500 as well as NASDAQ, we more than likely could see a sell off this week until we get that CPI data. That CPI data on Thursday, should it come out negative, it'll be bad for the dollar. Dollar index could break structure. We could see then indices start to rise towards the top side. So just to understand that in terms of where we're currently at, Euro USD, I know there was a couple of guys that took some buys on NFP. And if you took some buys on your USD, you obviously should be smiling. And uh, again, as always, you should be on the money in terms of your USD. So just a massive well done if you did catch that move from that perspective. Now, again, uh, USD are acted as we predicted uh, in terms of being uh, what we call that rattlesnake. It bounced off of resistance, uh, obviously fed off of that weaker dollar. So USD are got stronger. USD are uh, just prior to NFP was currently trading was trading at 18 rand 48 cents almost at that 1851 spike and we've now pulled back to the 1792 mark right just also paying attention to the fact we've been at the 1792 mark uh, for quite some time and again this might be a good buy opportunity considering where the dollar is sitting uh, from a support perspective so we are going to look for usd czar long positions in this particular reason region to start getting a little bit of that that bounce off of that that market price there um so on my side and from my perspective um i'm gonna more than likely grab a usd czar buy already just in terms of one feeler trade because of where it currently is sitting and uh, i'm looking at right from what it says yeah, from a pip count perspective i'm looking at a 1782 stop loss right so 17 rand 82 to the dollar and i'm just putting in one feeler trade I would like to catch it further up, but I'm obviously just also cautious that from a four hour time frame, we do have a much bigger support and that is currently sitting substantially lower than where we're currently at, right? Um, I think the ideal value proposition is catching USD at that 1761 mark. So again, that's still 40, 30 cents shy of where we're currently sitting. Um, I think there's some good opportunity um, right there. Now, NASDAQ, similar position so we're going to just switch straight over to gold and just have a look at where gold is currently sitting uh post nfp data release um <clears throat> and gold benefited right quite substantially off of that weaker dollar remember as a dollar gets weaker gold punches through i also saw a lot of you taking that opportunity on friday and i saw a lot of gold buys so if you were in that gold buy just a massive congratulations uh you should be in profit and you should have had a really really good trade on your hands for that particular session. Uh, so gold absolutely doing great things. And uh, again, for gold to really continue and have sort of any massive long-term future here, we do know that that key zone, and I've said this before, is that $1,690, so $1,690 to uh, an ounce of gold. So $1,690 to an ounce of gold is the level we need to see gold punch through right we are sitting at resistance at the moment should we get that weaker dollar we get that punch through uh we could then see some big big moves to the top side so this week there's going to be a lot of things that are going to drive the dollar uh good and bad what we're looking for and we can clearly see it across the whole market is we need that weaker dollar nfp was the first start to that but we need to start seeing that weaker dollar data weaker dollar data means we're going to see a shift a turning point, a T-junction in all markets, commodities, indices, as well as currencies uh, all together. So again, waiting for that shift is where it's going to be and what's most important. Uh, let's see. Uh, welcome, MH Pro. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Welcome to the Globex 360 family. So again, that weaker dollar is what we're waiting for across the board. There are so many opportunities that are sitting at that pivot point that that weaker dollar allows us to take uh, those massive massive moves indices commodities are prepped and ready for breakouts right so if we have a look at euro usd anywhere where the dollar is a quote currency we're looking for massive massive breakouts everything is sitting at that resistance levels that could be huge swing trades that we could hold for the balance of the year so we're talking about you know tens of thousands of pips if not hundreds of thousands of pips collectively in terms of what we could achieve over the next quarter over the next three months um so Naresh is saying how do we know when daylight time changes so in essence dst daylight savings time essentially changes uh twice a year right so we've got winter and summer times in countries that observe dst and 
if we have a look at the UK as an example, right? Their DST shifted last week. The US is only shifting this week, right? Um, so daylight savings times just means that in winter, the sun rises later. So they move up their clocks. When summer starts, sun rises earlier. So they move back uh, their clocks in terms of one hour. So in essence, it only happens twice a year. And for a lot of traders, traders that develop algorithms, traders that develop, you know, strategies that just look at time, you'll see a lot of those algorithms, a lot of those robots, a lot of those things will break in this season that we're looking for trends because trends will start to change trends will start to shift and the overlapping um relationships between different countries and their time zones overlapping that relationship shifts too so that's why you'll see a lot of algorithms a lot of robots a lot of signals all of them are going to start to go pear-shaped a lot of these gurus don't even know that the daylight savings time shifts for both the U for, for, for most countries around the world. There are a few countries that don't observe DST shifts. Uh, most Asian markets as well as Africa does not observe any DST shift. We don't shift our times, we don't shift our clocks at all. So that's just quickly answering that question really quickly. Now, moving away from gold, we just want to give a quick look into Brent. And Brent performed exceptionally well in terms of that NFP data. Oh, However, I must point out Brent did have a little bit of a gap, a little bit of a pullback this morning. And uh, again, a stronger dollar may not be good for Brent in terms of busting through that $98 per barrel. Right now, again, I've said this over the past coming week, past couple of weeks, that $98 per barrel is my target zone to start going long on Brent. But I need it to go through $98. I don't buy at resistance, I buy a breakout or a retest of resistance, right? So $98 uh, per barrel on Brent, we're right there. And again, for me, a very, very simple trade opportunity that will make my targets for the balance of the year is looking for that weaker dollar. A simple gold long, a simple Brent long alone would make my profit targets for the balance of the year, right? So if you're not too into indices or you're looking into currencies, Brent and gold, Weaker dollar, signs of weakness in the dollar, bad CPI data, which result in a weaker dollar could be the exact trigger that we need in order to go long. Now, remember, a CPI data release could shock the markets, right? If we get a hugely underwhelming number there, it could just take one event to set the trajectory and the tone for the markets. We saw NFP was a mixed bag. Unemployment went up, but there was a ton of new jobs created. So any one of these events, the market is super sensitive. We can see it. We can feel it. It just needs one event to tip the scales on the market. Um, still looking at more bulls on Brent because of what the OPEC announced over the last couple of weeks, 100%. So OPEC has slashed their barrel production by almost 2 million barrels per day, right? So again, supply and demand. When there's an equal demand, right? There's demand for cars, for food, for production of oil but then the supply drops, it becomes more and more expensive. Only thing to remember when it comes to OPEC, right, is they have a monopoly on oil production. So you've got to ask yourself, if they're slashing production, why? Right, you've got to ask yourself why. And if prices rise, is it in their interest to produce more and then capitalize and resell on a market at a higher value? Think about that. Because I believe that when price starts to get back into a uh, hundred dollar plus per barrel they very might well flood the market of oil at that exchange rate uh, and then obviously tank the price of oil if they tank the price of oil their monopoly only further grows because of the obvious obvious oil reserves uh, in saudi so obviously just have a look at that just make sure you are aware of that across the board um so someone's saying that usd czar has just broken structure uh when it comes to usd czar we need to remember that those push throughs, right? Those areas where USDZR pushes through from a support uh, perspective. I'm just waiting for my chart to update there quickly. Right. So when it comes to USDZR, right, in terms of structure, you've got to remember when it comes to support, USDZR in the past has pushed through support multiple times, you know, far in excess of, you know, 20, 20, 30 cents in the past. So when we see a push down, right it's not a breaking structure for usdzar right as an example all these moves here were not breaks in structure but yet clearly that's where resistance was that's where support was so if you put your resistance level there 
You would say, okay, well, Zar pushed through, right? Uh, 18 four cents, 18 three cents, but the support was sitting at 18 13. So there's a 10 cents push through. And if you adjust your support to be there, well, then the opposite is true for the resistance, right? We've pushed through 25 to 38, right? So there's a 15 cents push. So you've always got to keep that as a zone. And when you look at uh, your stop loss or risk management, you've always got to look at the past at how price is treated a support zone and how price is treated a resistance zone. That's why when I say zone, it means that a resistance is not a line. So if price goes through a line, it hasn't broken that line. It's pushing into a zone and very easily reject and move to the top side. But again, right, a push through and a take out of market structure. Again, it comes to risk management. You'll risk one to 2% of your account. If you're wrong, you want to be wrong quickly. And if you're right, you want to make five or nine to 20% on that trade, right? So again, not about being right, not about being wrong, just about risk management, right? Uh, and many of you guys have been following me for a while. You know that's what it's all about. It's not about predicting the market. It's just about being in a position to capitalize. Should we get there? Now, let's have a look at Bitcoin, right? Uh, because this was the big one, right? Bitcoin's whole premise is that if fiat normal financing systems fail, that is the premise around why Bitcoin has even been created, why crypto has been created, because fiat systems are centralized. They're subject to corruption. We're obviously not going to talk about you know Bitcoin being hacked a billion times, but uh, yeah, Let's have a look here. So we can see that I just did something crazy. I don't know what I moved here. There we go. So if we have a look at Bitcoin, we can very clearly see that the Friday NFP data certainly fueled a rally in Bitcoin, right? Yet it's not enough, right? Should we have seen a catastrophic failure on the dollar? I do believe, as I said earlier in the week, we could start to see Bitcoin returning to, you know, 28 $29,000 a coin, right? Meaning we move from 20 to 28,000. We're talking about a fairly big chunk uh, in terms of ROI there, right? I think around about in the region of 40%, if I'm not mistaken. So we could see a 40% gain on crypto, but we do need to see that dollar start to fall in value. Um, the dollar is currently the world reserve currency. And even if it goes through times of struggle, you'll have to remember the world still has a ton of their debt. The IMF has a ton of their debt in the dollar. So the dollar is one of those too big to fail kind of systems and Bitcoin's future rests on fiat currency starting to show its its flaws. We all know the flaws, but the public still trusts in currency. That's what fiat currency means, right? Whatever people think it is or, you know, it is what the government says it is. It's a trust based system. You can't take a dollar to the bank and say, give me my, the, the relation of gold to this dollar. They'll, they'll sell you gold for dollars but it's not backed by anything of substance that is tangible, that you can taste and that you can feel and that you can hold. Obviously, you don't want to taste gold. But anyway, so Bitcoin is very, very well positioned to continue some of those rises to the top side. And uh, I think it's going to be a very, very exciting week. We're going to play with show changes. And being Monday, Monday is more about analysis as opposed to actual placement of trades. Um, but we are going to look at dollars for lunch and how that US session starts to shift markets as we develop new strategies around dollar domination, as well as the dollar markets uh, and just their movements and their correlation to other markets. So this afternoon's dollars, uh, dollars for lunch is going to be big. I am going to be preparing a little bit of strategy. I do have some interviews this morning for new personnel that we're going to be taking the shows to the next level. As you guys know, the vision for Globe 360 Live TV is to be in a position one day that, and hopefully very soon with the next year, we are streaming for the whole trading day. Different presenters, different analysts, different interviews with politicians, JSE uh, analysts, crypto specialists, gold specialists. So I'm busy with interviews as we speak to look at how we're going to be expanding the show and taking things to a whole new level, right? Building us a trading floor that uh, as Globex 360 clients and traders from around the world, we have a place that we can freely discuss and openly discuss markets we can post trades, we can vote on the trades. Um, it's going to be mind blowing. Anyway, my day is filled with a bunch of that. I can promise you it's a very, very exciting future. Gearing is going to change. It's going to be to your benefit and it is going to be something you are really going to enjoy and position us from an instrument perspective. There is going to be no other option. There's going to be no other choice in the market that makes any sense outside of what Globex360 offers. So if you don't have a Globex360 Live account, 
please make sure open your open up the link down below we have an amazing team that can support you through the upload of your documents to the deposits to the withdrawals whatever it is you may need there's an amazing team i have put in the telegram group the chat bot and you simply select which department you wish to speak to and the team will then help you and guide you through that process as always my link is down below i don't always respond super quickly because obviously a lot of messages but outside of that i hope you guys had an amazing week last week i can promise you things are only going to go to the next level at the moment there is nothing like globex 360 globex 360 live tv as well as the academy which is launching extremely soon uh and again sit back relax and enjoy because you are in exactly the right place you are home as always remember to live trade and always do things the globex 360 way i will see you guys a little bit later dollars for lunch today is still going to happen quarter past three we will start to make those shifts from thursday and you can be a part of that right until i see you guys a little bit later let's have an amazing day and yeah see you guys all later on goodbye